So when I think of quality of life and inflammatory bowel disease, I think about um, having you return uh, to the kind of life and lifestyle that you had before you were diagnosed with uh, inflammatory bowel disease. And this often means certainly getting rid of uh, many of the symptoms that you may have, including abdominal pain, diarrhea, blood in the stool, but also some of the, some of the symptoms that I've really found with uh, my patients that uh, can be very debilitating are things like uh, incontinence of stool, uh, where you don't know whether or not you're going to be able to make it to a bathroom in time. And I've found, in my experience with patients, uh, this is uh, one of the most debilitating symptoms. Um, so I think there are uh, two key ways of trying to maintain your quality of life. Uh, first of all, the inflammatory bowel disease is a disease that doesn't last a week or a month. Often these are diseases of a, of a lifetime uh, or certainly many decades. Uh, so it's important that we keep you in remission or uh, having uh, really little to no activity uh, with your disease. So often that means being on medication uh, for, a, a lot, for uh, many, many years. Uh, even when you're feeling well, however, it's really important that you stay on these medications because if you go off them, you're much more likely to have a flare of the disease. And the other really important thing in trying to maintain a, a really good quality of life is having a really good rapport with your gastroenterologist. Uh, often times uh, with you or other patients, you're going to be uh, on one or more medications that can have potential side effects and it's really important uh, to discuss these side effects um, and these medications as you go along. So the issue with diet and uh, inflammatory bowel disease has not been very well studied. Uh, we, that said, we think that uh, inflammatory bowel disease is caused by an overreactive immune system in response to common bacteria that are found in food. So it makes sense that uh, it's, it's certainly uh, an important variable. Uh, in principle, I don't make specific dietary uh, restrictions for patients, uh, for my patients with inflammatory bowel disease. However, uh, many patients with inflammatory bowel disease also have irritable bowel uh, disease. Often this includes an intolerance to certain foods, uh, such as fatty foods, greasy foods, um, uh, certain drinks like uh, coffee. Uh, some patients also can be uh, lactose intolerant. Uh, so if a patient finds that there's a certain food or food group that they don't tolerate, I certainly uh, suggest that they try to eliminate that uh, from their diet. There are, however, other uh, situations. For example, uh, in Crohn's disease, uh, sometimes patients will develop a uh, stricture or what's uh, a, a narrowing from scar tissue uh, in response to long-standing inflammation. When this happens, uh, certain foods such as uh, vegetables with skins, uh, raw fruits, these can be difficult to digest because they literally get stuck. So what we advise with these patients is uh, what's called a low residue or a low uh, dietary fiber diet. There's, I've also had some patients who have uh, gone on certain diets on their own. Um, and most of these diets uh, have been uh, decreasing the amount of sugars, uh, fermentable sugars and carbohydrates in their diets. Um, as there have been some uh, uh, case reports that these have helped patients with inflammation. That said, they haven't been very well studied, uh, and I don't usually recommend these to patients. Sometimes there also can be uh, significant weight loss, which uh, we, we don't want to happen uh, with these diets, so uh, we do need to be careful. So abdominal pain is a very common symptom that we see in inflammatory bowel disease. Uh, and the main way to treat the abdominal pain is to treat the disease. So if there's inflammation in the intestines or colon, uh, what we'll usually do is prescribe a medication to treat the disease uh, and the inflammation, and hopefully that will uh, in turn uh, 
help uh, treat the pain. In some cases, uh, if we look in with a camera and don't see any kind of inflammation in the colon or intestines, we're forced to think that the pain is not from uh, inflammatory bowel disease, but is from more something like uh, irritable bowel syndrome, uh, which can give rise to abdominal distension um, or spasm of the colon, all of which can also cause pain. So, and these are treated with different kinds of medication, things like uh, antispasm uh, medications, and really don't have anything to do with inflammatory bowel disease per se. Finally, we really try to avoid certain classes of medications, particularly the uh, narcotics. Uh, we feel that uh, these can give rise to further problems, especially constipation. Um, the bowel doesn't move as well, which in turn can give rise uh, uh, to uh, further pain, uh, and it doesn't really get to the uh, true matter at hand, which is the inflammation. The treatment of inflammatory bowel disease uh, often involves uh, the use of uh, quite a number of medications. Uh, typically, patients will be on one or more uh, medications. Sometimes these will be uh, medications that suppress the immune system. So they can have uh, potentially uh, serious uh, side effects. So first of all, you want to be with a doctor who knows these side effects, uh, who can recognize uh, these side effects or complications of these medications, um, and who tells you all, really all the important side effects um, before starting the medication. And then once you've started the medication, uh, it, often these side effects occur uh, within the first few weeks. Some are long-term, but uh, uh, most are not. So it really comes down to the really good rapport that you need with your doctor uh, in order to uh, recognize these side effects. Uh, you need to be really, a, your doctor needs to be a phone call away uh, because sometimes these uh, medications need to be stopped uh, pretty quickly. Much like uh, abdominal pain, uh, chronic diarrhea is a very common uh, symptom that we see in, in inflammatory bowel disease, uh, especially with Crohn's disease. Uh, usually with um, ulcerative colitis, it's more of a, a, a bloody diarrhea. But with both diseases, uh, the main thing is if there's inflammation, either within the colon or intestines, uh, that uh, we think is causing or uh, contributing to the diarrhea to treat that inflammation. And usually uh, this is involving uh, one or more uh, immunosuppressive uh, type medications. But also, like abdominal pain, uh, there can be other reasons uh, for diarrhea. So uh, many patients have uh, irritable bowel syndrome on top of the inflammatory bowel disease. and. Uh, Typically, this uh, can also, uh, in some cases, it involves constipation, but sometimes it can involve uh, chronic diarrhea. So in those cases, uh, the m treatment is different, and it usually involves uh, a medication to slow down the gut uh, from moving so fast, things, uh, medications like uh, Imodium, uh, and that really doesn't have to do with treating uh, the inflammatory bowel disease, per se.